Good evening, everybody. Me and Eddie decided <laughs> to get together for this special Sunday update. And uh, we are going to be recording this a little bit early, so we're not going to be going live. But we wanted to bring you the information that we uh, would like you to have for our Sunday update. Yes. We're having direct here on our Sunday show. We're enjoying Black History Month. We'd like to give a shout out to Positive Rhythms or Rhythm Driven, provide these outfits. Thank you very much. And we're representing the movement toward the MORE Act. We have not forgotten the MORE Act that was promised to us by our current president and vice president. And even though they're dealing with war, the war against drugs is the one we're trying to end as well. So as we move in this next 35 to 40 days toward 420, we want everybody's conversation across the nation to be about what we're trying to do, which is make herb more convenient and legal for each and everybody on the planet. Since the World Health Organization has helped us to make this present, we have to give them back the support by being conscious cannabis consumers. And that is our goal for the next 40 days. So let's go. All right, so in legislative updates this week, we have got two bills that we would like um, anybody, uh, anybody and everyone who would like to come to the Capitol please join because these two bills are, um, are very important and ha have both been ran uh, many times in the past. So the first one that I wanna talk about is Senate Bill uh, 099 and it's sealing criminal records. And this is uh, kind, of the, kind of the clean slate bill that um, a Weiser, or Weissman actually uh, wrote uh, about three years ago three for years. legislation mm -hmm. and uh, we're gonna, uh, bring it back with a whole bunch of uh, a new coalition brought it back and we're part of that coalition and we're happy to support that piece of legislation. Uh, in case you are wondering what this does, um, currently there's a process that allows for automatic sealing of criminal justice records for certain drug offenses. The bill extends the automatic sealing to all of the offenses, including civil infractions that allow the defendant to petition the court for sealing criminal justice records that are not subject to the Victims' Rights Act. This bill streamlines the automatic record sealing process. The bill requires the state court administrator to <coughs> produce an annual report regarding the automatic record sealing. Uh, this bill makes it an unfair employment practice to discharge or refuse or promote a person basically solely on the contents of a sealed criminal record and makes it an unfair housing practice to refuse to show, sell, transfer, rent, or lease housing uh, because of a sealed criminal record. The bill requires the Colorado Bureau of Investigation to produce an annual report regarding uh, this record sealing and the bill makes clarifying and organizational changes to record sealing statuses. So this is gonna change a lot of um, a lot of backgrounds for a lot of people who are going to be able to enter back into the workspace here in Colorado. Not to mention it's going to help on the housing because if your record is closed to those sources of information, you'll be more apt to qualify for housing that's going to be provided and addressed by the country as well. So it's a double-edged sword that helps you cut through some of this government stuff that we're trying to get through so that we can pull this scarlet letter off of the chest of those people that partake in cannabis. So make sure you give credence to your legislative body in this midterm for uh, those who acknowledge alternative medicine and the identification of other sources for people that are or in need of these assistances to have those assistances available to them is very important. The way they get that information is very, very important. So get involved, have it as a common conversation so that you can know more about it, know what vocabulary is involved with it, 
And this is our opportunity to move. There are going to be lots and lots of grants. Cannabis is the most bipartisan thing we have going right now as the country grows out of all of these changes that we're making. When there's war, there's always going to be cannabis to give us a relief from the anxiety that has been historically used over and over again to give us an understanding and an understanding of what we're going to do to remain humane as we remain human. So that's very, very important. Please understand that. Yes, and, uh, and to sum up that, that piece of legislation, we've, um, it's gonna be in the Judiciary Committee on February 24th, so that's Thursday, it's Thursday. coming up. Um, and that's at 1.30. So if anybody's interested in supporting that legislation on a capital level or coming down to speak in person in um, support of that bill, uh, you are more than welcome to meet us in the basement of the Capitol. And if you are wanting to have your voice heard still at the Capitol, but you're unable to get there, there is still remote testifying. And I will put a link um, in our video today to, that has our remote testifying video. And it goes through every step that you need to get on and remote testify with the legislators to make your voice heard. It's very important that it be heard. Um, and we do have an action alert that you can go on and send a letter to your legislators and be heard that way. Um, it's obviously more effective once you give it in person or um, I guess I would say remotely, it's a little bit more effective. But if you have a personal story out there, you make sure to enter that personal story in the letter of the action network when, when you're filling it out. Um, it's already filled out for you. All you need to do is type in your name and your address and the letter is uh, pre-written and uh, you can take any parts out that you feel unnecessary and add parts of your story because a personal story is always more touching to the legislators than just the same letter over and over again. Yes. Um, and yeah, then the weather's in climate for this coming Thursday. Yes. So please keep that in mind. Just make sure all your connections are together. So you can go virtually to the Capitol's legislative uh, spot and I think receive it as well. If you just want to view it from a distance or if you want to be an active part thereof, um, please click the buttons, be involved. Let it be second nature to have these things discussed because they're taking your tax dollars already for this. So if you're going to be a conscious contributor, help them because they need those types of ideas mm -hmm. that you have at your level in order to make those types of collective decisions that help us. They all help us. That's how we let 1317 slip by there. And now we're seeing and paying for it. But that's a whole other discussion. So make sure you're conscious enough to know what's going on in your immediate area, please. Denver is very special. When we leave Denver and go on the other side of the Mississippi, you don't find the frequency of dispensaries, the convenience, the uh, options that you have here in the Mile High City. So let's give thanks to our governor for being sharp enough to know his people understand us, but now it's our turn to make it better for each and everybody. Because whether we want to or not, people are following the model of Denver. When they come to Denver, they want their city possibly to be that friendly with the 420 relationship that goes on here. So keep it in your conversation so we can help set the standard across the nation. And speaking of employment, since SB, 99 is going to allow more employees to enter the workspace. We uh, here at Colorado Normal, we've been trying to pass a piece of legislation that's um, going to protect employee employment and employees. And uh, this is our fourth year of running a piece of legislation. And it seems there's been some mix up in uh, some of in some of the language of our bill. And um, 
it's uh, definitely under construction at the moment, but we need your, uh, your help. Again, on Thursday, it's going to be heard um, in the, the Business Affairs and Labors Committee, and that's at 1.30 as well. So it's going to be hard to be in both places at once, but if you go online, you can sign up for one and then you can sign up for the other. And if you're at the Capitol, you can go in and sign up for one and sign up for the other. Just tell the Sergeant in Arms that you're going to be testifying on two bills that are happening at the same time. And just to know um, that the one for employment protection is going to be in HCR 112. And um, I will get the, the place of the other bill here in just a second. Um, I just wanted to reiterate of how much our bill has changed from um, the original. It's like I said, under construction. And it seems, uh, you know, a lot of people are not ready. Um, em employers are, are not ready for medical marijuana use on premise. And, and we understand that um, 20 states protecting employment, employees, employment protection, we as the first state want to not fall behind with legislation and be the 20th state to, to pass employee protection. We've de kind of decided to change a lot of the language and um, I'm looking forward to seeing what Representative Putin and Representative Tatan has put together. But uh, we've got bipartisanship with um, a lot of the businesses in creating a task force that would let us know uh, what might be a condition of employment impairment. And once we put a task force together, we will be able to maybe identify impairment, not just THC, because this has not just THC, it involves opioids, it involves if you're too tired, um, this involves so many other like just prescription drugs that may make you drowsy at work, metabolic rate yes exactly any number of things that could be the variable that has to be further analyzed so that's why we're going to try and create more conscious consumers that would make this micro dosing comparison of what is needed exactly between prescription drugs or big farm as opposed to alternative medicine, which would be change of lifestyle possibly, in addition with cannabis introduction, or even just CBD. Um, with, with this with this piece of legislation, we hope to, to really create a space where physicians and, um, really and patients and the business community can learn from each other. And once we get everybody involved and on the same page, this is when we can actually become the first state that could pass legislation for all the other states because we would already have set precedent for impairment. And once there's a precedent for impairment, other states can follow. Um, and I believe that other states would change a lot of the legislation that they already enacted because a lot of the employment protections had to jump through many hoops and for them to actually be passed a lot of the language was stripped and we don't want that to happen to our medical patients or even our lawfully recreational adult use users. So we want to um, create a good piece of legislation and a good task force, which will include patients, physicians, uh, businesses, in the chambers of commerce. Something and that will help us to make the transition from what is not acceptable whether it be an attitude or whatever, now that the laws have changed, by using that espungement, you can now be considered differently. And let's start this all over again so that maybe we can get a better understanding of the information and education that has to happen so we can make even better legislation. We're already leading the nation with the type of legislation that helps us to be alternative choosers between the two. Now we have to refine that and make it even better for everybody to have access to that cannabis lifestyle if that's the way they choose or not, or if their friends 
therefore chooses, or if they choose to use or not use, it is available to them through choice. And through that choice, you become the voice. So more conversation about what all of this means to you because they're using your tax dollars. So in order for you to make sure that you make the best utilization of what their commitment back to the community is, you have to be conscious. Absolutely. I think that's all the legislative updates that we have for, for all of you guys here in Colorado. Those are the two most important things we want wanted to discuss and, and hope to see you all at the basement um, capital. Uh, we'll meet around, let's say, let's say noon mm -hmm. at the capital. I'll go ahead and put up an event for everybody to, to be aware of, of where it's gonna be. And, um, and I get parking, there's, there's new parking across the street and across the way. So, um, so we hope to see you there. And if you are not there, like I said, we're gonna have a link or I may put it in the video uh, that you're watching right now behind behind us that shows you how to remote testify and that will um, another way to get your voice heard. And again, we have an action alert for both um, Senate Bill 0994, for the Clean Slate Expungement and for House Bill 1152 for employee or employment protection, but more so for a task force of employment protection to allow um, a conversation starter for between the physicians, the patients, um, adult users and uh, the businesses. So we look forward to seeing you all on Thursday. Yes. And make sure you use your Colorado authorization to educate the nation because that's what our responsibility is. To who great is given, great is expected. We just happen to be the leaders. So be a good leader, be a good information gatherer, you can educate yourself and maybe our division one schools and the rest will start to recognize more of what we're talking about since the World Health Organization has already recognized us. But you have to be the conscious one to get the rest of the information to you and your friends so that it all makes sense. It all connects the dots. Yes. Information, education, legislation. Better legislation. And this is what we enjoy doing because this is the way forward because they've been considering people who use cannabis to be less than literate or education wise based, but uh, it's really the other way around. So anything that you can do to help to break those stereotypes, please understand Colorado Normal is exactly where you need to be and your time and availability is what we're looking to find because mm -hmm. you too can change the world. And uh, in, in March 4th, we're having a patient day at the Capitol with Bridget Donseret. Hey, hey. So I'm super, super um, excited about that. And uh, we'll, we'll have more to come. We don't wanna put too much information out there because we want you to focus on meeting us at the Capitol on Thursday. And as Eddie said, that doesn't look like the weather is going to be too good. So um, if the weather looks like it's going to be bad, uh, we will go ahead and um, remote testify because I don't take that chance. I live in Longmont. So right. um, I will be remote testifying and it means just as much to remote testify as it does in person. So um, six, 26 degrees. Uh, yeah, you'd be smart, be safe. And recognize that you can Zoom the uh, legislative body in. Um, there are other ways, but you can use your phone or your uh, desktop computer to connect, save it to watch later. But this is the type of involvement that it takes yes. for us to make better legislation once they understand how many people are expressing how much better it could be for them. Some people are on fixed incomes. Yeah. Some people don't have enough income at all. Some employers are overlooking the potential of the possibly the best employees they may have with this. 
So we're trying to correct all those wrongs and get back in alignment. Information, education, and then legislation, and then better legislation. This is a part of that better legislation that we're doing. So the more you talk about it, the more you have conversation about it, the more you get a chance for it to be available to each and everyone. That's making an effective move of communication through your community that's supposed to be that shared responsibility between dispensaries and their community. So we have such great potential, such great potential. Absolutely. Monday, snow. Tuesday, snow. Wednesday, snow. Thursday, 17 degrees. Very cold. Yeah. So not only are you getting information updates, you're getting the weather. Be safe. <laughs> Be safe. And we hope yes, to see you on Thursday. And if the weather's not bad or if the weather's looking bad, remote testify. There will be a link and a video right after this. Yes. See you guys Thursday. Colorado Normal. Over and out. Next time. <laughs> well, this is Ashley, and I am executive director of Colorado Normal. Uh, we did not have a Sunday update this week or a chapter meeting, uh, but I did want to reach out and let everybody know how to remote testify at the Capitol. We have a bill that is going to be heard tomorrow in the business committee. And it would be helpful to have those of you who are interested in this bill pass, uh, testify. And if you're not able to reach the Capitol, you are able to testify remotely instead of just written. So I just wanted to share my screen. I'm gonna share my screen with everybody and show you how to go about testifying in person at the Capitol. So what you're gonna go to is leg.colorado.gov. Again, that's leg.colorado.gov. And when you get to the main page, you're gonna to wanna to scroll over to committees. Once you've found committees, you're gonna go down to public testimony options Click on that. When you enter that click, it takes you to um, welcome how to do this. There is an instructional video. Um, it is quite quick. Doesn't go too much in depth um, on what to do. There is remote testimony, submit written testimony, testifying in person, or you can just listen online. We are going to be remote testifying. This will explain how you go about doing it. You advance register before each scheduled committee hearing and we need to download WebEx because this is how uh, the Capitol is testifying. Um, that's the program that they are using so there is one other step that we do have to do uh, if you are going to testify and that is download WebEx. Um, so then we would need to register and then you will get an email with confirmation. So how do you wish to testify? And we are going to say in person and we are going to go by committee and hearing item, which it's the business committee and the hearing item is promoting social distancing within the cannabis industry. And it is House Bill, House Bill 1058. So we're um, going to click here and go to the committee name. And it doesn't have the business committee listed at all. Tomorrow it should have the business committee listed because that um, is going to be, that's what's on the calendar. Now, when I went to the promoting social distancing um, bill, which, which will be heard tomorrow, it does not have a date set right here. It normally says, this is the time, the day, 
and the building or the room number that it's going to be heard in as well as the committee. Uh, this has nothing scheduled, so this makes me concerned for those who are wanting to sign up as a witness. So I will be calling them in the morning to let them know that this does not have the house or the business committee. But once this does, you're going to go there and do the business committee. The meeting date and time is going to be uh, tomorrow, which is the 13th, I believe. And, um, and it's at 1.30 and it's going to be first on the agenda for uh, everybody who would like to testify. So again, when you are remote testifying, this is testifying via WebEx. So what you're going to do is go over to here and go to webex.com. And then you're just going to go to the download, click, and you can do it for either Mac, Apple, Android, uh, Android or uh, I guess Apple, whichever you use on your phone, this can be downloaded on your phone too. So there is no excuse for people who are uh, wanting to testify but have no access to a computer computer. You, there's no need because you can do this just via your cell phone. So um, please be there, please um, testify, we need, uh, we need, we need your words. Um, and to go into more detail on words, we have an action alert um, on coloradonormal.org, especially just specifically for this bill, which is like I said, 1058, promoting social distancing. So if you go to coloradonormal.org and you go down to action alerts, it will take you straight to this page. Enter your address, first name, last name, your email, your city, your zip, and start writing. What this says, and you can personalize it if you would want. This goes to each one of the business committee members. There's Representative Kyle Molka, Representative Monica Duran, Representative Kevin Van Winkle, Representative Terry Carver, Representative Judy Amable, Representative Mark Snyder, Representative Shannon Bird. Representative Dylan Roberts, Representative Tom Sullivan, Representative Shane Sandridge, Representative Patrick Novell, and Representative Mike Lynch. A lot of representatives, but I do not like to call them. Um, I like to respect their titles, so bear with me with all of the repeat representatives. So this message, uh, once you do the action alert and send it to the business and Affairs Labor Committee, um, you can go in here and type in whatever you would like. We went ahead and just have a, um, as your constituent, or uh, you can change that as your, um, as your patient, as a patient, you can change it to however you would like. But this just says on March 20th, 2020, Governor Polis first signed the executive order D-2020-11, which suspended the requirement for medical marijuana patients to have an in-person physical examination in order to be eligible for a medical marijuana card. This allowed retail marijuana stores to facilitate online ordering of marijuana and allowed retail marijuana stores to facilitate sales to customers outside the licensed premises. The cannabis industry has worked closely with the MED to make permanent rules related to social distancing, but some, statu some statutory changes are still needed. What the bill does is it permits physicians to conduct medical marijuana examinations for patients via telehealth. It aligns retail marijuana law with medical marijuana law by repealing the prohibition of online sales. Uh, this bill just codifies the executive orders of Governor Polis and just continues to provide safe access for employees, medical patients, adult cannabis consumers during this pandemic, and also those patients who are unable to drive to their dispensary or go to um, their, their doctor. And um, 
I hope this video helps. Um, so uh, again, urge you send a letter and um, that is really all we would like for you to do. Um, if anyone has any questions, please feel free to reach out. If anyone has any testimony um, for this bill and would like me personally to read it beforehand, uh, I can do that. I will uh, kind of just bring the bill up here so you guys can all read it. Um, it promotes social distancing and it just does exactly, you know, very, very, very short, sweet bill. Um, this one should pass with out an amendment. However, there has been some concern um, of the 18 to 20 year olds. And this is where we need your testimony and where we need all of you to join us in um, trying to get this passed unamended. If, if you could remember that, pass please unamended. And for those of you, again, just joining us, maybe the tail end of everything, I am going to show you one last time how to log in and remote test, testify. So just go to your computer or your phone, leg.colorado.gov. Hang over the committees down to the bottom, which is public testimony options. This takes you to remote testimony. How are you gonna testify in person? remotely via WebEx, and then you are going to go down here to the, oh, I was wrong. I was in the committee and house hearing. So this one, you're going to go to the business labor and technology. The meeting select date would be, I guess that would be tomorrow. Hearing, well, that's not the one we want to, but Tomorrow it should change and you should be able to go on to uh, this web page. But remember to download WebEx and that is WebEx, W-E-B-E-X.com. Download to either a Mac or uh, a PC, either an Android or an iPad. And once you do that, you will be able to uh, sign up and testify to in front of the whole uh, business committee. So again, I want to thank you all uh, for watching this video and hopefully learning how to testify via remotely. And if you have any questions, like I said, please let me know and I can, I can help you with, um, with anything.